Hey, it's Dr. Joe here, and um, I'm doing today's, uh, uh, what's it called, Wealth Wednesday from San Diego, California, here with Bigger Pockets and uh, Conference. Really, really good. And uh, since there are hundreds, I think there's probably a couple of thousand people attended um, this conference this year, and um, you know, you get investors from all different levels you get some experienced ones you get some newbies you get intermediates and all levels of that and so what i wanted to do uh, today's wealth wednesday is uh, pick a, a topic which i think is kind of relevant and what is what are the traits of successful real estate investors what are some of the traits of successful real estate investors that's the topic today and uh you know as you know i've been doing this for about 35 years or so and during that time, I've been through some good times and bad times. I've learned a lot of lessons uh, of what works, what doesn't work, and also I've met a lot of people. And I wanted to capture some of the features which I found. Um, you know, that kind of links a lot of the successful investors together. So that's the purpose of today, is talk about some of those features, some of those success, success traits, and, uh, and so on. So the first one is knowledge. And one thing I found is that successful real estate investors always are seeking knowledge, always looking to learn, always looking to grow, always looking to expand their mind uh, in different areas. Because, um, I mean, I'm always learning. I'm always trying to better what I'm doing and uh, be surrounded with people who are more experienced than myself and, uh, and so on. Uh, you know, there's different ways you can... Um, expand your mind. Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh, I read blogs and I go to rear meetings and uh, I just network with like minded people. So, whether it be in the burr strategy, cash flow, buy and hold, section eight, I'm always seeking to learn more about my uh, area of expertise such that hopefully I can grow what I'm doing and hopefully I can share. Uh, information with other people as well so you know it, it, it's 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 those things you know it's never be satisfied um, with what you know there's always more that you can learn and I think I found that successful real estate investors always pushing the envelope always striving to you know to learn and to, to gain wisdom from other people and hopefully avoid making what I call unnecessary mistakes. I mean, the market's shifting. You got to know what works during good times, bad times, and what to do and be able to pivot uh, should situations change uh, beyond your expectation. And uh, in order to be able to pivot, you've got to have knowledge. You've got to have an understanding of what your options are and uh, how hopefully it's going to be able to be better you. You know, it's a shift in market. What worked six months ago may not work today. And likewise, what works today may be outdated six months, a year from now. How do you be able to survive through that? Knowledge. Being able to understand what your options are and being able to pursue those different paths should the situation arise. So that's one of the first things that uh, I found successful real estate investors have. is the strive for knowledge. The second thing is patience. Uh, we all know that real estate, well, we don't oh, know, but I found that real estate is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It takes time, and you want to use, use time to your benefit, okay? And, um, you know, some of the best deals I've had, uh, it may not have been a great deal at the time, but over a number of years, what was a marginal deal has now become a really good deal. What didn't seem so... Uh, great. Now I'm thinking, man, what a genius I was. I mean, the first house I bought, as you know, it was a disaster. Um, I, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. and But I stuck it out. And now looking back, I am so grateful I bought the house when I bought it. And the cash flow I'm making now, oh, it's tremendous compared to the $50 cash flow which I was making when I first started. So again, patience it's really important, especially if you do the buy and hold model, and especially if you're in these growth market areas like Washington, D.C., a lot of the metropolitan areas around the U.S., especially some of the um, East Coast and West Coast areas as well. So the idea is patience, 
let time be your friend let time work in your benefit and uh no it's the what's the, the hair and the toy toys story as you know steady but steady but steady will get you to win the race patience is the second one the third thing trait is vision okay the ability to understand what are you know where you're going okay what's the direction you're uh, pursuing uh, be able to have the vision to see you as a success because you're going to go through ups and downs good times and bad times and you have to understand your why and know that you're doing this for a means to an end okay so you've got to have the vision and the other thing is vision is for example when i do uh buy and holds i may buy an ugly house which needs a lot of work okay so i have to be able to visualize you know what the potential of this property is going to be uh i can see it or i can at least imagine it in my, my mind but a lot of people can't they don't know all they see is a crappy house a horrible house in terrible condition but i can see potential i can see wow this is going to be a, a beautiful swan i'm going to turn this ugly duckling into a beautiful swan okay so vision is really important because it allows you to kind of um you know, look ahead, look to the future, and see how it's, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do could work out in the future. You've got to have a vision. Um, you know, I typically will buy a three bedroom house and turn it into a four, five, or six bedroom house. I can visualize, I've got a vision of how this is going to work. I may be able to have two bathrooms, three bathrooms, four bathrooms. I've got to have a vision as to how this is going to be so the idea is to utilize your skill sets be able to visualize the future when you buy a house visualize the potential uh in terms of uh, what you can do to maximize the property the fourth one uh trait is efficiency and uh efficiency uh, i i call that being able to leverage on other people's experiences so that way you don't have to recreate, recreate the wheel. I'm not the first person to do real estate investing. I'm not the first person to do buy and hold investing. Other people have paved the way. If I'm smart, I can be very efficient, okay? Um, because I can look at the mistakes that other people have made. I can learn from their experiences and hopefully avoid making the same mistakes that other people have made in the past okay trying to be efficient as the saying goes a wise man learns from his mistakes but the genius learns from other people's mistakes so that's what we want to do we want to be geniuses and be able to leverage on the experience of others so we can get to where we need to go to a lot faster than if we're trying to figure it all out ourselves the fifth trait is focus focus really important i mean we're at this conference today uh, i was speaking to one gentleman i mean he was doing wholesaling he was doing rehabbing he was doing buy and hold he was doing you know a bunch of different strategies he just lost short-term rentals he was just all over the place and he lost the focus he became very um confused he became very despondent because he just wasn't he was working hard but he wasn't really getting to where he wanted to go. He had, didn't have the focus uh, to put all his energies into a few things. So again, if you want to be really, really successful, you've got to be able to focus. That sort of, um, what do they call it? The shiny, shiny object syndrome. You've got to get beyond that. Because sometimes the grass is greener, is, the grass is always greener on the other side until you get there. And once you get there, you realize, it's a lot of work it's not always cracked up to be and so on so focus allows you to be targeted it allows you to avoid distractions it allows you to sort of put all your energies to one or two things okay and the sixth thing uh relationship building that's one of the traits that i found to be successful real estate investors tend to do they realize that they're no longer a one-man show no person is an island the way to be successful is to leverage on the skill sets of others 
you got to build a team. Yes, for example, I can hang drywall. But, you know, is that the best use of my time? Probably not. I can probably hang out drywall eventually. By the time I, I do it, it may take me five, six, ten hours. Whereas if I had an ex expert, it may be able to, they may be able to do it in one hour. Okay? So there's certain things that you can do to gather your team together. And how do you gather a team together? You, again, you leverage on other people's teams. You can go to rear meetings to find out, you know, hey, where do you get the good contracts from? Hey, where do you get good um, attorneys from, real estate agents, title insurance companies? All those different things, it's all about relationships, okay? And one of the key things that successful real estate investors do is to always expand their network, okay? It's always to develop relationships, build relationships, because, for example, one of the keys to my success has been my ability to build relationships with different types of people. And then um, the seventh one is uh, leverage, Okay, successful people tend to leverage, leverage their time, leverage their relationships, uh, leverage other people, and um, you know, leverage opportunities. Leveraging money, what do you mean by that? You know, essentially, a ten thousand can buy you a hundred thousand, or a thousand dollar, a thousand dollar house. If you leverage it, maybe allow you to buy a. Fifty thousand, sixty-seven thousand, eighty thousand, hundred thousand dollar house. So you're leveraging money. Okay, you don't have to bring all the cash to the table. That's one example. People uh, leveraging other people, as I said before, building a team, a team of highly talented, hardworking people. It's not hard. It's not easy to find these people, but they're out there, trustworthy people. Because if you find those people, you can leverage on those relationships. Okay, another one would be opportunities. There are lots of opportunities, especially as the market shifts, okay? So again, you want to be able to strive for those opportunities, have the systems in place, have the relationships in place so you can take advantage of those things as and when they come out. So these are some of the characteristics um, that I found anyway for successful real estate investors. So I'm just gonna summarize again what are those seven traits that I have found that successful real estate investors tend to have? So number one is there's always seeking knowledge. They're never satisfied that they know it all. No, they're always trying to expand their mind through reading books, audio books, uh, podcasts, blogs, go to real, real, real estate investor association meetings, and those, they're always trying to expand their minds. Number two is patience. Real estate is not a get rich quick scheme. It takes time. And if you do the buy and hold model, especially, you can use time to your advantage. Okay? So something that may be a marginal deal today, in a few years from now, you're thinking, my goodness, what a genius I was when I bought this house. That's number two is patience. Number three is vision. Be able to be able to see beyond what uh, where you are today. If you buy a, a house that needs a lot of work, be able to visualize what the end product is going to be, okay? Trying to visualize where the end mark is going to be on your journey to success. Because if you understand what the vision is going to be, it gives you the confidence and the desire to continue when the, when the road gets tough, as they say. Number four is focus. Uh, you know, successful real estate investors tend to focus on a few things. They don't try and do everything and be everything to everybody. It's important to focus your attentions and focus your time and so on. Number five, number six is relationships. Uh, successful real estate investors I found is they're always trying to expand their knowledge, expand their network, and expand their relationships, okay? Always doing that. And there's different ways where you can do that. And then finally, number seven, leverage. Uh, successful people tend to leverage their uh, skill sets in terms of money, leverage money, leverage relationships, leverage systems, okay? So these are the seven traits of successful real estate investors. I thought I'd share with you. Uh, I'm here at the Bigger Pockets Conference. I think this is a very applicable topic and I wanted to give you my take on that based on my experience. So again, hopefully this was helpful and I will see you next Wednesday for a live session with Dr. Joe. 
uh, of Wealth Wednesday. So until then, have a great night. I'm at San Diego. I'm going to be hanging out for the rest of the night and probably tomorrow as well and heading back down east uh, probably Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, so have a good night.